Um, a lot of times we've been talking about the first view and what's been going on in the first view or what does happen in the first view of the spirit world. But let's go to, say, the second sphere. In the second sphere, your body will look around, depending on what emotions you're... you're but let's say you came from the earth and you died of old age. By the second sphere, your body will look around sort of 35 or 40. That's good. Uh, you'll, you'll look pretty fit. Like, so you won't have all this... <laughs> any flab sort of sitting up here at all. And everyone you walk past will also look pretty much the same. Um, you'll actually, the way you eat will be more sort of smelling than eating. So it's all about the aroma entering your, your spirit body. Um, you will drink uh, water, but not, not in the same manner through your mouth or anything like that, but you'll feel yourself absorb it. So the spirits call it drinking water and eating food. Um, although it's a bit different. The surroundings in the second sphere are, are more beautiful than the most beautiful place you can get here on Earth. So, so if you can think of the most beautiful place that you'd love to live on Earth, or in the second sphere, that's around about, and just a touch better than that will be where you'd be living there. Your house, you will have a house. Um, your house will be a reflection of your life as you've lived it up until that point. And in fact, right now, if, you, if your condition right now is, say, in the second sphere of the spirit world, right now you have a house there already. And your soul created it as a part of its progression. And that house is also a reflection of your life as you're living it right now. So the instant you pass, somebody will actually introduce you to the house that you've created. In the location that you've created. And they may take a bit of time before they introduce you, because they might want to introduce you to a number of other things first before they take you home, if you like. But that home will be a creation of your own, of your own soul. Nobody else will have created that home for you. And um, the homes in the second sphere look a bit better than the homes here, They're like the best kind of homes you get here, but they are a reflection of what your desire is. So if you've always desired a lovely log cabin on the side of a hill overlooking a lake and you'll find that uh, in the second sphere there's a pretty high likelihood that you'll be, go to your home that happens to be a lovely log cabin overlooking a lake. <laughs> right. you find, though, you'll find though that as you progress your desires change and they also become more powerful. And also your concepts change. So, so what you believed you'd like in the second mm -hmm. sphere by the time you get to the third sphere, you're starting to think that it's not as important as you were previously considering it to be. And so your desires change and the, the home that you then have in the third sphere would be being created for you while you're in the second sphere. And that home would be a reflection of your new desires and your new longings that you're, you're actually generating within yourself. Animals are all there as well in the spirit world. So whatever animals uh, that you enjoy, you probably want to surround yourself with those. You can also visit locations. So there are cities. Um, they are all much more harmoniously governed than the cities that you have here, <laughs> which is good. And there is also work to do, but not in the sense that most people consider it. Um, so there's not, there's not this, you will want to grow like in the third sphere, for example, many people are growing gardens, for example, learning. They're learning how to actually create a plant and then have God's life force enter that plant so that now the plant is growing things. So they're learning how to actually manipulate matter to, to grow things by the time they reach the third sphere, generally. And in the third sphere, you've got some interesting choices. Uh, you can remain on the natural love path uh, if you desire, or you can actually find out things about the divine love path in the third sphere. And there are certain things in the third sphere that you find out about on the divine love path that you can't find out about in any other sphere. So in other words, if you're on the natural love path and you progress to the sixth sphere, and then all of a sudden you decide you want to go on the divine love path, many times you'll have to go back to the third sphere in order to uh, investigate those things that you didn't investigate the first time that you passed through the third sphere. Your homes in each sphere grow in grandeur, generally. Uh, 
but it depends a bit on you know what the desires of your soul are. So so if your desire is to have this fantastic place, then obviously you will. But if your desire is to live in the bush and yeah. and just have a you know just have something that's really natural, then that your desire will be fulfilled in that regard as well. So by the time you get to the sixth sphere, any desire you actually have can be fulfilled and created. And that means that any desire that is also, um, that you want, to, anything you want to believe, you can also create as long as it's in harmony with natural love. So there's literally billions of spirits in the sixth sphere who believe they're on the planet Orion and they believe that they, you know, communicate in certain ways, and they do. But they don't know the full truth of what's happening around them. They only know what they believe, but they're in the state of love where their love is being perfected. And so the third sphere is a place, so the second sphere is a place where you start to look good. The third sphere, obviously, from there on, you're starting to look better as you grow, and growing younger. By the time you reach the seventh, you'll be looking around 25 years of age and uh, your body will be looking pretty shapely, thank you very much. And you won't notice it, that's the other thing. <laughs> Whereas, here you notice it, but because there's not too many people who are, who are hundreds of years old in that, in that shape, right? But in the spirit world you don't notice it because everybody else in the same location is the same. So, so it's not, so the things you think you'd notice here, when you pass over there, they sort of become old hat sort of thing and uh, they just become what you naturally assume to be the case. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so as your desires change, when you look back on the desires you had, they will seem quite sort of meaningless almost in many cases because your new desires seem so powerful. And every time you grow into a new state of love and into another new state of love and into a new state of love, you'll find that these desires will continue to change. So. How many of you love partying, you know, going out every Saturday night, getting drunk, partying, whatever, all that stuff, right? Now, some of you probably in the past really enjoyed that, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Now, why isn't it that, that attractive anymore? Part of the reason is because society looks down on that. Okay. But, um, but if you don't care about that, <laughs> Florida's a great place to do that. <laughs> <laughs> So why don't most people finish up doing it forever? Yeah, I guess there are people that do. Yeah, they're not good enough returns. Yeah, exactly. What what eventually happens is that you're not you're not getting certain emotions within you fulfilled like you thought you were, and so then you decide well there must be other ways to fulfill these particular desires, and it's very very similar in the spirit world. You when you go through these different spheres, you get to the sphere and it's just an awesome wonder, right? But after some years, and sometimes after a hundred years, and it might be for some spirits it's after a thousand years, they decide, no, this is now getting a bit old hat, I want to see what else is out there. And that's what causes them to desire to seek further in many cases. There have been spirits in the sixth sphere who have been there for 35,000 years or longer in that one place. And it's a place where you can create so many things that you can be so absorbed in creating these things that you start, that it's only after a long time, many thousands of years, that you start realising that all you're doing is the same thing over and over again with different subjects. And once you get to realise that, then you, and you allow yourself to feel that, potent, that dissatisfaction within, that's when you usually start investigating, well, how do I go to the seventh sphere? And that involves the divine love path. You can only get to the seventh sphere uh, through the divine love path, through connecting with God. So there's many spirits in the sixth sphere who think they're connected to God. But in reality, they're not. They are connected to God from an intellectual perspective, but they don't yet know how to exercise that connection emotionally. Is it the library? Books. I love books. Yeah. Lots of books. Yeah, well, like the pageant messages do describe many of the spheres. So the the, uh, the Judas messages that Hans Radix channel uh, describe a lot of the spheres up to the seventh and what you'll experience there. The uh, if you want to know more about the hell, the wanderer in the spirit lands is a book that actually describes a lot more about you know what kind of experiences are occurring there for spirits. And another book uh, written by I think it's uh, is it Jane Sherwood. Um, 
uh, Postmortem Journal. I don't know if any of you have heard that one. Um, it's a book about the passing of Lawrence of Arabia and his own personal experience, channeled material through this lady called Jane Sherwood. It's a really interesting book. It just, the first seven or eight chapters describes his experiences as he was going through the hells and his experiences of awakening spiritually. And so, so there's lots and lots of books you can read about all sorts of all sorts of uh, uh, experiences right the way up through the sixth and the seventh sphere. It's very very hard for you to understand anything above the seventh sphere until you've received a lot of divine love. Um, very, very difficult to understand what's going on above that. Can you give us a title of that quickly, please? Uh, which one? The Lawrence Arabian one. Uh, yes, called Post Mortem Journal. And I think the lady who channeled it is called Jane Sherwood. And where do you get that? Um, I got a copy from the US, so so there, there is certainly copies here. Uh, the best thing to do is do a search on the net, maybe on Amazon or something, and, yeah. and just see where you can find it there. It's not popularly produced that book, yeah. so um, it's uh, it's not as widely uh, available as, as some other books are. A Wander in the Spirit Lands, and there are quite a few others like Spirit World and a few other books like that are all on the CDs that I've left with Mike that are on the corner there. So they're under the section Natural Love. Mm -hmm. And the pageant messages, the, the complete pageant messages are also in there under the section under Divine Love. What so. about a book about maybe your relationship with God and what he's taught, taught you personally? Is there anything written about that? Uh, you mean... You mean me personally, or oh, you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Our, well, have you read the book? <laughs> you, you, I haven't been there, so you've been to the twenty-second level. And yeah. I guess at that point, there's a relationship more personal, or more—I don't know what I want to call it. You know, is there anything written about how that relationship looks? No. Um, the reason why there's nothing being written, there is things written on in the spirit world, yes, but not here on earth. Uh, there will be things written here on earth, um, but, uh, but the things that what, what we're hoping to achieve actually is that many of the things that are written in the spirit world will be just transcribed here on earth, and so so you'll have a complete like section of books which are all basically uh, books that were first created in the spirit world, and and. Day, then you, you'll be able to read them on, on here on earth. But there's nothing like that right now. Nothing like that right now. The the uh, other issue that everyone faces though with regard to reading books is uh, unless you've reached a certain development emotionally, there are certain things in these books that you think you understand but don't yet understand. Uh, for example, how many of you have read the uh, Robert James Lee's series of books, like Through the Mists? Go to Heaven, Life Elysium. Re I really recommend reading those three, actually. They're very, very good books. Through the Mists is a description of the spirits, of the spirits passing into the spirit world. Uh, and then his introduction to, to the spirit world, if you like. The, the Life Elysium is, a, is the next series in the book. Seven, it, was a, it was channeled seven years later. And it's a, it's a channeling about his life, you know, as he's growing in the spirit world and some of these experiences that he had. And then the gate of heaven describes the experience of entering at one moment with God through the eyes of the spirit, through the, in the spirit world, entering, entering that state in the spirit world. And so I'd really recommend those three books. They were, they were channeled a hundred years ago by, by a man called Robert James Lees, and they were also on the CDs that I've left with, with Mike as well. Um, and that's under the section Divine Love. In those books, um, they describe a lot of his experiences as he was experiencing these transitional phases. And you start seeing that it's not as clearly defined as what you may initially conceive of when I draw the spheres. The, the truth is that all development is still emotional. And as this man was progressing emotionally and working through different emotions that he had, he was actually progressing also through the fifth spheres without without really knowing he was doing it. And he got to the seventh sphere 31 years after his passing. 
and, uh, and made the transition into the first celestial sphere at that time. And the, the channeled material is really wonderful material though. And you will find though, that if you say, if you yourself are say in a second sphere condition when you read the material, mm -hmm. there's a lot of it that will just go over yeah. your head. And, and when I say over your head, I mean probably over your heart, it's probably a better yeah. way of putting it, because you won't resonate with it at the heart yeah. level. Then when you go into the third sphere and you feel changes within yourself, you will notice that when you read, read it, that there was yeah. it's like almost like rereading a new book, yeah. you know, and and you reread it again, and all of a sudden there was all these things that stand out to you that never stood out before, and then when you when you progress even further, you can reread it again. I've actually reread them twelve times those books, <laughs> uh, and every single time I've uh, enjoyed. It's a new book every time. Yeah, it's a new book every time. Basically, I've enjoyed his experiences. As of as I've been actually re-experiencing all of them as myself. How can you not know if you're going from one level to the next when I think you said previously that you can actually choose when to go? Um, I haven't said that you can choose when to go in the sense of I can't I can't just go ah oh, I'm going to go to the second sphere and off I go. It's not like that. Because the second sphere condition is a condition of love that is higher than the first sphere condition. And love is something that has to come from the heart. It has to be real. So you can't manufacture that intellectually. It's actually a condition that occurs within your soul. So the only two ways to grow your love are either to grow your love coming from you, which is the natural love path, means growing in your morality, if you like, or growing on the divine love path, which includes morality, but also receiving God's love into your soul. They're the only two ways that you can actually move from one sphere to another sphere. You can choose to go back at any time you want. The instant you decide to be at a location anywhere else in the spirit world, as long as that location is the same as or less than your own condition, you will be able to go to that location. But you cannot choose in the same way to go higher in location. The only way to go higher in location in terms is, is because it's all the development in love. So the only way to go into a higher location is to actually change in your heart. And that takes a lot more effort than just going, oh, I want to go there, mm -hmm. and you go there. So there's lots and lots of spirits actually that are spending huge amounts of time trying to work out how to get to the seventh sphere from the sixth sphere. And they're not listening to a word of what the people in the seventh sphere are saying. They are trying to get there another way. They're trying to get there using their intellect and, and a number of other ways. And they can't do it. And they've been trying for thousands of years, many of them. Mm -hmm. Are they enjoying all this trying? Maybe no, no, some of them are not. They're getting to the point of frustration. Oh. 